We're here with Susan Crawford, and we're looking forward to DML 2013. Susan, I'd like, uh, well, first of all, can you just uh, briefly introduce yourself, your, your, your current role? Hi, Howard. It's great to talk to you. I'm uh, currently a visiting professor at the Harvard Kennedy School. Actually, I'm the Stanton Professor of the First Amendment, visiting at the Harvard Kennedy School, and also at the Harvard Law School. I'm also a new fellow at the Roosevelt Institute in New York City, taking on the issue of bringing fiber to all Americans. And I'm splitting my time between New York and Cambridge. Because I, kn I know you also do some work with young people what have you been learning about millennials that would, would be of interest to our public? Well, I had a wonderful opportunity to talk to the people who are part of the Roosevelt Institute campus network. So Roosevelt has 10,000 students in colleges across the country, 100 different chapters, and they're all completely student-led think tanks. And these kids, these students are so exciting to talk to. Their energy is undimmed. But more importantly, they are absolutely optimistic about the future. And they're fearless. They know that they're the ones who are going to be making their own stories. Uh, unlike my own generation was a little afraid. These guys are afraid of nothing. And they take chances and they use technology like breathing. So I have been thrilled to get to know them. I've been visiting a bunch of chapters across the country, and their sense of engagement and also responsibility for the country is inspiring. So this, this is a, a data point for the argument that youth today are, are not disengaged, that they are, in fact, engaged in civic participation. In fact, I'd say, Howard, they're even more place-based than you might think. I mean, this is the generation that's given us artisanal cheese in Brooklyn, but it's also giving us lots of place-based innovation that they think is going to help enrich the lives of the people around them. Uh, they seem then my um, they also seem really attracted to the idea that they can help themselves and their neighbors make their lives better instead of waiting around for an institution or the government to do it for them. They're impatient with institutions, I'd say. So it's a data point for individual agency, autonomy, and engagement, and it's, and it's quite exciting. I, I know that you're doing some work in the city of Boston of, with, with young people using technology to solve problems and explore new forms of civic engagement. What can you tell us about that? It sounds exciting. It is exciting. This is called the Community Innovation Lab here at Harvard, and this is a collaboration between Kennedy School, also the Architecture School, the planners are great at this, and the City of Boston. And the City of Boston, the Mayor's Office in particular, is bringing us in contact with three different neighborhood organizations in Dudley, which is an underprivileged area of Boston. And they've got design challenges, Howard. They're thinking about things like, what's a 21st century park? How do we get more people to vote? How do we get youth in our neighborhood to get more youth involved? And my students and the design students are immersing themselves in the neighborhoods, working with the neighborhood organizations as partners, and coming up with solutions to these very difficult problems that then the city of Boston is going to implement. And we think this is a scalable sort of university, government, neighborhood kind of collaboration that could be done anywhere in the world. And we're putting the whole thing online, making it public as much as possible so this kind of neighborhood experience, design-based, user-based design experience can be replicated anywhere. Fantastic. I, I know that the other people at, at the conference are going to be interested to, to learn about this. Well, what excites you about participating in this particular conference of, uh, about digital media and learning and civic participation? Well, this is quite a moment for these subjects. I mean, we've got little bright, shiny objects of experiments taking place all around the world in transparency and civic participation, but we haven't yet gotten traction with the broad public, but it's going to happen soon with the ubiquity, sort of the, the knowledge that each one of us can affect our civic lives um, using technology, using slivers of our attention. Uh, there's a tipping point coming, a real breaking point, and I'm excited to be part of the conference and excited that there's so many people making a change in the world using technology. Wonderful. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. It really is great to see you. I really appreciate the chance.